Hi, hello, and welcome to Capricorn Venus Tarot. I'm Capricorn Venus. So today we're gonna see how would a tarot reader describe you? So we're gonna see all about your personality, how people see you. And we've got four piles. So pile number one is the honey calcite. Pile number two is the red jasper. Pile number three is the lapis lazuli. And pile number four is the amazonite. So go ahead and take your time, pick your pile, and I'll see you in there. Alrighty, pile number one. How would a tarot reader describe you? Education. So I feel like a tarot reader would describe you as someone who is like a Luna Lovegood type is kind of what I'm getting. Like somebody who has this kind of sweet, um, airy kind of energy to them and yet also a very like dark, mysterious side. Um, so yeah, very like moon like because there's a there's a oddness to you almost like something very intriguing or interesting and kind of funny. Um I feel like you have a resting smiling face like you have a, you're very hmm you just seem like happy and dreamy. And so it adds impact when you say something really dark. <laughs> um and I feel like that's something that a tarot reader would definitely mention about you just because like to not be surprised, <laughs> to not be surprised by what you might say. So pile number one, how would a tarot reader describe you? Yeah, but you have this sense of like optimism and happiness constantly. Like you have a, yeah, it's like inner peace or something like that. So I feel like they would, um, a tarot reader would describe how you have the sense of inner peace. And so it might be a different kind of relationship than people are used to. Um, I think for a lot of people, Paul One, relationships are a lot more not really talking about anything deep and just like hanging out or like just, I don't know, more surface level. And I feel like you don't really have like too many surface level connections because you are so calm that you just like talking about what you like talking about and you're a pretty deep person who is interested in very esoteric subjects or something very niche or um, you're very passionate about your interests and your hobbies and um, it's what it's like kind of the joy of your life is these projects and these um, you know worlds that you get involved with and you might be into fantasy or you might be into I could also see you being really um, good with nature like you might be the kind of person where a deer would come up to you. I did have this friend once and she she and I went on this hike and I'd been on that hike many times. Like I had taken a few people to that hike in particular. And of course the time that she comes with me, a deer is so close to us, very near like a residential area. It was crazy. And I feel like she had that kind of vibe of like um, Disney princess for lack of a better word, for lack of a better example. Um, but yeah, Disney princesses have that. Luna Lovegood has that. Um, in terms of men, there's been a lot more like dreamy boys like that on screen lately. I can't think of any. Um, but that's definitely an archetype with men too. Like just kind of like interesting and maybe you have glasses and maybe your hair curls in just a way, you know? And I feel like, you know, that could come up if it was a romance reading, right? Okay. What else for pile number one? Yeah. I think because of this, you know, inner sense of calm or your own world that you're invested in, um, a lot of your time is dedicated to that inner world and to that hobby or whatever it is. Um, so, you know, you don't have a lot of time for other things outside of that. <laughs> so to be patient with you, I think a, a tarot reader would, would say like to definitely be patient with you because it's not a lack of interest the fact that they're giving you any time at all, the fact that Pile One is giving you any time at all should be a compliment 
because, you know, they'd be fine with all of their time and uh, day to be involved in whatever these like inner thoughts are or, um, you know, niche community, right? So, hmm. Because there's, it's more than that. It's like, you have like a dreamy kind of vibe where you're just floating through the world in a way. And I feel like that's what a tarot reader would describe where you might not really feel like that much time has passed because of the way you live your life as in it's on different, it's on a different timetable, you know? So I feel like they would, they would stress that point. Um, you're on a different timetable than most people. So just like adjust yourself to that. So what else? How would a tarot reader describe pile number one? 12 is Pisces, which seems like very in line with what we're talking about. Now, this might be a um, one about out of left field for you guys. Maybe not because this is about you. But anyway. Um, but anyway, I think Capricorn sometimes gets this reputation of being very hardcore and very business. Um, but you know what? The Capricorns I've met, especially people with lots of Capricorn placements, they are the most romantic at heart, sweetie pies um, that I've ever, ever, ever encountered. I knew this one girl um, when I was living in Florida who she's she was like a Capricorn stellium, I know. I know she was a sun and moon Capricorn. But I, I think she was a rising Capricorn as well. Like, um, and she was just so sweet. Like you could only imagine her in pink or, you know, pale colored dresses frolicking through the woods. And, you know, her hair was like this really pretty honey color, which we got the honey calcite here. Um, that really was super curly and romantic. I feel like you have a romantic sense about you that a tarot reader would be describing because... Um, yeah, it's just like romantic ideals, <sighs> mystical settings that are more like light and a bunch of roses, a bunch of pink roses. Um, that's what I think of with Capricorn, you know, which is funny because I feel like a lot of people think of it as a harsh sign or one of like the more cold or cutting ones. But, um, yeah, I don't know. There, there's must be an intersect with that, I think. <laughs> Um, but anyway, okay, Leo as well. So this is interesting. Yeah, because what I'm seeing with the fifth house here in Leo, definitely the creativity, like we were talking about, you just live a very creative life. It's all your own. Um, you have like a, if you're not, a, you might not even be a literal artist, but the way you live is like an artist. Um, and but, but as well, it, the other thing that I'm trying to say with this, geez, I can't speak. Um, and I feel like you don't talk that much. That's another thing that the tarot reader would describe is like, you, it might take a while to get to know pile one because they don't always have the right words for things or they really care about how they say things. They're kind of perfectionist in the way they speak and live. So it might take them a while to decide what to say and just decide how to interact and um, you need you need a thought process time before you can get started. But um, the other thing is that you you tend to take up attention, pot one, even when you're not meaning to. So I feel like a tarot reader would mention to these people that are asking about you, right, um, that you're going to be accidentally causing a stir everywhere you go. Basically, everywhere that pot one is, there's a plot line happening. And not all of those plot lines... Um, how one even knows about there's a there's a non paying attention part of you um pow one that would be described like i think they'd be warning people that there will be controversies <laughs> that you don't even see happening but will be happening behind the scenes about you um and there's just something about the way you live your life because it's so different than other people and because you see things so differently than other people you know um some people don't take well to it or some people take too well to it. Or, you know, some people need to have a whole, you know, essay written about the way Pa One is. You know, people take Pa One very personally and they start projecting onto Pa One. So yeah, they're going to draw all this attention because of of these differences. And yet, really, they're kind of almost shy. I feel like you have a shy part of you. Um, pa one that would need to be described because you are so 
able to be yourself, even though it's different. But that doesn't mean like you're perfectly um, outgoing. I feel like you're confident, but you're kind of shy at the same time. So um, yeah, they would describe that. Like you kind of do need a little protecting in a friend group. You know, I think, Pa One, you need friends who will, will defend you and protect you because I just feel like you are a special kind of person who, who needs to be allowed to be on the outskirts. So you do need a community and I hope that you're able to find that for sure. Yeah, I know that made a huge difference in my life for sure. But yeah, I'm getting that with you. Again, there's a quiet sense to you. I think the reason the tarot reader would bring, bring that up a lot is just because you might not seem like you're shy. Again, because you're so willing to dress differently or, or act differently or whatever. Um, so they need to know that you actually are shy and that they need to reach out more or, or something like that because you're just, that's just part of your personality is that you're a little shy. And just because you like to dress differently doesn't mean you always know how to approach people in conversation. Nine of Pentacles, yeah. Yeah, you are very independent and you're in your own little world. And again, we get this like Disney princess look. Um, so attracting animals, kind of like looking off into space and thinking about something totally different, like not present sometimes, you know, and um, has their own dream world that is making them very happy, you know? So I think that's how a tarot reader would describe you so far. Let's keep going. You need a lot of rest. You need a lot of downtime. Don't hound pile one. I think that's, those are things people would say as well. A tarot reader would say as well. It's like, don't hound them. Let them have their rest. It's like this too, This tarot reader would need to be like soothing these people a little bit um, because I think you are kind of hard to read. So it's not impossible that someone would want to get a tarot reading on you, Pile One. Let's see. Mm. I think also though they, that a tarot reader would say to be careful though because you have this sense of drifting off, drifting off, like thinking of your dream world and then all of a sudden you like zoom in on a person and you're completely awake and you know everything that's going on. Like you can tune in very strongly and very powerfully. It's just that most of the time you like to be in your own little world and enjoying yourself, but that doesn't mean you're not dangerous. I definitely think a tarot reader would emphasize that you are dangerous. Like you have a magical quality um, that is like powerful. Again, it's like, yeah, kind of witchy, I guess, for sure. A lot of those characters are like witchy. But I'm mostly getting like more like cemetery vibes, like, you know, white chiffon in the cemetery and it's kind of like Victorian ghost kind of stuff here. Um, there's that kind of sense to you. Like dark academia. Um, this whole kind of energy really plays into how you interact in the world. So I feel like that's why they would mention it. Um, I am getting Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, Capricorn, and Leo. Pentacles. Yeah, the, I feel like a tarot reader would definitely describe having you have one foot in kind of your, your own world at all times. Um, so in the times that you step completely into the physical world, you're really not happy about that. You're not happy about rubber banding back into the real world and having to deal with a conflict or something that takes you away from your private time or takes you away from your fantasy time. Um, or not, like, those are just phrases for what I was talking about before. Like, whatever your activity is, whatever your interest is, your passions. So anything that snaps you back from brainstorming about your passions is kind of going to there's going to be some backlash because you don't like to be taken away and for your time to be wasted. That's a big thing with you. Um, I think they would describe how a big thing with you is don't waste my time. I don't want to hear about anything boring. I don't want my time wasted. Um, and boring is just like, like pettiness or drama or something really easily avoidable or something like that. Um, they don't, like that sort of thing. They would say like, Pal One doesn't like that sort of thing. Like, 
you will not like the response you get from that kind of action. Also that you, you again, it's like something about you really like your life. So a tarot reader would talk about how you really like your life. You've struck a nice balance. Um, you have your rest time. You have your independence. Um, you're well loved. You're very interesting. You can handle yourself. You know, I feel like those are all things that a tarot reader would would say about you. Yeah, I think they would also mention that a lot of people fight for you. And again, I'm getting this sense of you not really knowing about it. Lots of like behind the scenes fighting or behind the scenes people competing over your attention. Something like that, um, that you are not really a part of. And so I feel like they would kind of warn them like there's a lot of competition for pot one. Um, whether they know it or not, you will have to know it. You'll have to deal with it. Whoever's looking into you, you know what I mean? Um, I, cause I'm not seeing you deal with this. It's almost like you have a lot of people competing for you. And then you have some people around you that act as like a little bit of bodyguards. And so that, that is like a role in your friendships that sometimes needs to be played. Like everybody matters. Um, and you bring something to the friendship and they bring something to the friendship and it becomes equal. But I think there are still differences, you know, like Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, I think that they would they would make sure to say how valuable you are, how how big your future is, how much potential you have, how special you are. There's definitely a heavy emphasis on that, how different and special you are. Um, would definitely need to be like a top part of the message. Okay. Again, you are very stable. You are very happy. You feel really good in your life. I feel like they would mention that like, because right, when you, when you get a tarot reading, they might be reading the situation, but they're also reading you getting the reading. So I feel like they would want to emphasize that just so that, no one tries to disturb your peace. I do feel like the tarot reader would feel a little bit protective over you, pal one, and try to defend you <laughs> from, from any other energies. So, okay, well, that's what I'm getting there. Let's pull some music videos to end off. How would a tarot reader describe pile number one? I really like this one for you, Freaky T, because it's just basically her dressed very differently and everybody else hanging out and they're all to see, here to see her and basically she's like the star of the party. And that that is really what I was seeing from your energy for sure. And I feel like you accidentally make people fall in love with you. Two Selena Gomez songs, so maybe you look like her. I always look for like the appearance related stuff. Um, in the music videos for sure. Yeah, because we have like this bubblegum kind of style here. We have a more dark style here. Um, both in this. Oh, no. I was thinking of a different um, Britney song. This is more dark. This, is, this always gives me Capricorn vibes. Yeah. Well, that's what I've got for you. I definitely think you have a lot of people fighting over you and people would, you know, that would definitely need to get mentioned as a warning. Um, but yeah, I'll leave these down below and I'll see you next time. Okay. Pile number two. Let's see. How would a tarot reader describe pile number two? Three is Gemini, 
Nine of Sagittarius, interesting. And another nine, double Sagittarius. I think a tarot reader would describe how good you are at debating and you love to get in little fights or you love to go back and forth. Um, I feel like you're a very like flirty, vivacious type of person. Um, and a tarot reader would definitely describe that, especially if they were, they were wanting some love advice. Like the best way to get to pile two would be to get into a good debate back and forth or, um, you know, being really charming or flirting, um, you know, being good with your words, basically. Okay. Success. Dang. I think a tarot reader would describe your potential and also your accolades that you already have. I feel like a tarot reader would describe your interests and what you've been doing. Some of you have like a higher degree of education or something like that. Um, just because nine represents higher learning and three is Gemini, which is like communication. Intellectualism, I, I think of as very Gemini. Libra too. But. If it's not that, maybe they just describe how smart you are, you know, and describe how well you understand things or you've done your own research, um, your independent research. I know a lot of people, um, you know, they keep a catalog of the type of people they meet and, you know, they learn about people that way. And I feel like that's setting up a framework for yourself and learning from it. So that counts as education. All you need is a syllabus for it to be education. You know, Notion is free. Download Notion. It's a great website. You keep all your thoughts organized. And now you have a syllabus. <laughs> so, okay, interesting. I feel like you are very funny too. Not that that was a very funny joke. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Um, but <laughs> I would think that a tarot reader would describe you as someone very funny. Um, definitely knows, again, it's this charming verbal back and forth bickering kind of thing that you have that would be described heavily because it's very important in your personality. It's a, it's a big part of your personality, basically. Um, it makes you happy to get into conversations. It's like, I think that they would describe how um, having good conversation is what refills your energy and what makes you feel good. And that's kind of what you're chasing. So um, yeah, I feel like they would describe that. It's not that you get bored of people or it's not that you um, don't like people. It's more that you really get a kick out of having a good conversation. It's it's really that simple. It's not personal. Um, so yeah, okay, maybe that needed to be said. Maybe they're taking you a little personal or, or people could sometimes take you personally um, in that maybe you just don't really, yeah, it's, it's just, you don't like small talk. I think that would be an easy thing to say for sure for you, pal, too. Um, okay. I feel like they're also going to describe how you don't really care what the genre is that you're talking about. You could talk about any subject. It's just that you're going to want to go deep on it and you're going to want to really discuss it. Um, so I think, again, this is giving like romance advice to me. Um, like in order to, or even like get, if you want to get to know pal two, if you want to um, be pal two's friends, if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. And, you know, you... <laughs> Again, I'm just, uh, again, not that I'm funny, but I do feel like you ha your comedy timing and your sense of humor um, would be discussed at length. Um, okay. Success and the Queen of Pentacles. So, and then we're talking about like your accolades, your achievements. You must have like a you know, 50 page length resume or something like that. Like you've done a lot of things. You've, you've, you can exist in a lot of different environments and not just like as a, oh, that's that you could exist. No, you have existed in a lot of different environments. You've gone through a lot of changes. You've been multiple people in this lifetime in a way. Like 
yeah, you've lived many lives, <laughs> for example. Like, I, I just feel like you know things, you are solid in yourself, you've already done a lot. Like, you've already done a lot worth being proud of. Um, and so that would need to get mentioned because it, it provides that landscape from which your personality shines. Um, you know, like you have the accolades to back up what you're saying and how you act. So you may act in a way that's very loud and um, sure of yourself and engaged and present and, and running things. Um, and so you need to know about the accolades, basically, to know that, you know, I mean, I guess you don't need to know about the accolades, but I think they would bring it up just so that they felt the kind of respect they should have for you right away. Pal two. I feel like um, the tarot reader would want to make sure this person knew that you are to be respected because you've actually accomplished things. Like you're not, it's not a joke. Like um, it's not an exaggeration. You have accomplished those things. So you should be listened to, you know, you know what you're talking about basically, but it's more than that. It's not just, you know what you're talking about. It's tried, tested, approved. Like you've seen it all. You've done what needs to be do all the kind of studying or self-study you need to do to understand what you're talking about. So, okay. Like there's practicality, there's action behind it. It's not all computer research, nothing against computer research. Like I love the computer, no. But I'm just saying that there is an additional benefit of a lot of in-person experience as well. I just, I feel a willingness to get into an altercation. You know, I really do. I feel like you are willing to go to bat for the things you care about. You're not joking. Like there's something about you are so funny, but you're not joking. Like, <laughs> like you're so, so funny and you will say a lot of funny things, but you're serious about what you're talking about. Um, and you're serious when you say you don't like this thing. Even if you add a joke to it, you meant that shit. Like, you need to pay very close attention even to the jokes here with Pal 2. Um, because if you take it too far, you're, you, you know, it's not going to be so funny anymore. Um, then you do not want to go up against Pal 2. And I think they would make that clear. But I think they're not emphasizing not going up against that you. It's more, it's more to let the person know that you're actually very dedicated to this. You really mean what you say. And it's not... It's not something you're just putting out there. You're just saying what needs to be said or you're just um, like virtue signaling or something like that. No, you really live that life and you really you really do what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, okay. I just think you have a larger than life sense about you, a very important person energy that you're giving off. And so I feel like the tarot reader would emphasize that this is earned you're reading this important person energy. That's correct. This is an important person. Here's why. Um, okay. Yeah. Also that you have a very sweet side. I think that a tarot reader would describe how you have a very sweet side. You're very willing to help people out. Um, but you will have respect. Yeah. And it's that serious. <laughs> it is. <laughs> It is dead fucking serious, Paul Do. Okay. <coughs> mm. You're all choked up. Don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are intimidating. You know. I feel like they would definitely say that. I feel like you, you, your energy would intimidate the tarot reader even a little bit there. Okay. Yeah, but there is something about like how willing to support others you are. Um, how with this kind of achievement that you've done or, you know, level to that you've reached, you are constantly giving out cups. You're constantly giving out opportunities. I could see if you're like a person who has some responsibility, you, you are described as someone who wants everyone to win, who will bring up everyone with you. Um, yeah. You're the leader, but it's not a bad thing. You know, a lot of us have problems 
with authority. So I feel like your tarot reader would probably mention to the person like, yes, they're an authority, but like not the kind you've dealt with before, like a good one, <laughs> a good authority. Okay. Trust this person. I feel like a tarot reader would tell someone asking about you to trust you, that you're very trustworthy. Um, it's not at, it's not risky as long as you're not going to try to step on pile two's toes or you're not going to try to undermine their authority or try to dismiss their accomplishments or something like that. If you did those things, then yes, you should be afraid and you shouldn't, you shouldn't really trust pile two. If you're going to, if you're going to act like that to them, then they will come against you and they'll win. Um, but for most people, I would say you're, you're, you're trustworthy to everybody else. Ooh, I feel like a tarot reader would also describe how you are very open to a good argument. You know, if somebody has a good argument or a good defense or convinces pile two, they're open to it. They're definitely open to it. And your quick wit. And I feel like they would describe how smart you are and they would describe how you would do everything with a soft touch, even though you're so like fun and funny and on top of the world and a leader and everything, you also have like a kind of a soft touch in a way. So I, that's kind of, it might seem contradictory, but it isn't. I feel like you're doing all of this stuff with the, with a lot more subtlety than you might imagine. Instead of like a harsh, you know, emperor, I'm more seeing you as like, an, I'm more of an empress, somebody who, it's like soft power, but it can turn into like a fight if, if need be, but it's more like, I'm urging you to take this action instead of I'm asking you to take this, or I'm, I'm forcing you to take this action. Um, even though you kind of are forcing them and they should do it, um, you leave them more room for dignity, I guess, <laughs> okay? Eight of Pentacles. Yeah, I think they also describe how you're a slow burn. You might stay at that funny, friendly level for a long time. Um, but that eventually you will come in. You're not a commitment phobe or like anti-deep relationships or something like that. And it's not impossible to break down your walls. It's just that you take a lot to, uh, long time to assess people and... Um, make your decision about if you want to come forward. But if, if you sense that the relationship is progressing, it is. It is. You know, like, don't doubt yourself. I feel like people get a little bit intimidated by you. And they they see that you are, they really like you. I feel like people really like you. But they still get intimidated. They're like, what if I'm reading them wrong? What if Pal 2 hates me? Or, <laughs> like, we all have those moments, right? What if Pal 2 hates me? What if, um, you know, what if I'm a bad person? And pile two is going to think I'm a bad person. And that's just something like people, you know, those are just thoughts. And so I feel like a tarot reader would want to soothe that and be like, no, if you feel like it's going well, that's because it is. Um, they're not going to switch up on you. It's just that they take a long time. And that's, that's really it. It's no, it's not like a secret plan or something like that. Okay. Yeah, you really care about what's right. Like, you really, really care about what's right. And you you will stand up for them if something were to go down. I think that's another thing a tarot reader would describe is that you are de the people's defender. Like, you will go to bat for your friends and the people in your circle. And um, you're a person who can who always wants to help out in a fight. You know, who always wants to help out... Um, if they see someone moving boxes or if they hear that someone needs help moving, like you are that person, you know, emotional support person, ride or die, like lots of words for it. But I just feel like you are reliable, Pal Tu, and a, and a tarot reader would describe that. Um, I think you're a different kind of reliable person than others are used to. They're used to like maybe um, totalitarian types. If they're going to be the boss they're going to be the boss in a mean way and a harsh way. And they're never going to let you keep your dignity. You know, if you want to go to the ice rink, but they, they know we're going to go to the playground, they won't be like, maybe we can go to the ice rink next time. 
they won't leave you any kind of spare thing. No, no. Pile two always makes you feel good. It's not the same as these kind of bully types. Um, they might have a strong energy. So I, I just feel like a tarot re reader would describe how your energy is strong and people might misread this as your ener energy being like mean or like bullying or something like that. Um, you might have been accused of being a bully even when you were not, not doing that at all. Like it was so far from the truth. Um, so interesting. Like you always fight for the underdog. So it's like kind of insane to call you a bully. Yeah, and I feel like another thing a tarot reader would say about you is that you could use the help though. You know, you could use a friend. Like, Pile 2 seems infallible. They seem amazing. Like, everybody does romanticize you, Pile 2. But I think a tarot reader would say, like, that's all true, but they still need a friend. Everybody needs a friend. Everybody needs a little help. Everyone needs to pick me up every every now and then, and Pile 2 is no exception. So make sure you still take time out to check on Pile 2 and, um, you know, show them love and still try to appreciate them like you would want to be because they're not just, they don't really show that they're struggling or they don't really necessarily need help, but it would be a great help because they do have a lot on their backs. It's just that they have like a very stoic sense to them. You, Pile 2, I mean. Um, so that is what I'm getting for you, Pile 2. Very interesting. Let's post some music videos. I shuffled these real quick, actually. Yeah, Queen of Wands and Ten of Pentacles, too. So I just feel like you do have it all taken care of, you know, and you know you're hot. That's another thing. Um, this isn't one of those, you don't know you're beautiful kind of situations. Um, and you know what you have, like, you know what you have at your disposal, you know yourself. So I feel like a tarot reader would try to emphasize that is like, you are not necessarily finding a diamond in the rough when it comes to pile two. You are stepping into a museum where pile two is on display like you have it taken care of you've already found yourself you're not being discovered by them I think they would try to emphasize that so they didn't think they were getting like a manic pixie dream girl kind of situation with you um it's more of pile two is a very impressive person which we can learn from not I'm the only one that sees the goodness in Pile 2. A lot of people see the goodness in Pile 2. And you are one of them. And that's great. That's still an honor. That's still a fun thing. You will still gain something. But don't think you've found some secret gift. Everyone knows how good Pile 2 is. <laughs> yeah, judgment. Watch out. I think that's what they would leave them with. Is like, watch out. We like Pile 2 up here. Watch it. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, I don't remember this video at all, so I really wonder what that one is. Oh, the light went out. Yeah, there's definitely something about you being very important. Um, this makes sense too. Yeah, it's like, just like Lucky is like, she's so lucky. She's a star, but she cries at night. <laughs> Sorry, Pile 2. But I like this too. It's like a leadership energy and you, you being friends with all types in there. And, um, each one of those people thinks they found a gem in you, Pile 2, but, you know, you are just a great, amazing person that a lot of people can connect with. And that's just the truth. It doesn't lessen any of those relationships, but people do need to realize that, you know, Beyonce said it best. It's like, you're, you're not irreplaceable. Like, and it's not a mean thing. It's just, why would you give up a, a job with the king? You know, just because you're like, oh, well, I'm going to go find another king to be, <laughs> be the squire of. It's like, that's stupid. That's stupid. And I, I think it's okay to admit that you have this kind of status of it's an honor to be with you or to be around you. And it, it is. And that's okay. Like, it doesn't make people lesser, but they also need to realize that when they're being friends with you. So, I don't know. That that probably means something to you. Um, 
yeah, I'll leave these down below. Thank you very much, pal too. And I will see you next time. Please leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Pile number three. Compatibility. So that's interesting. Maybe... I don't know. Maybe maybe you have a soulmate that is is asking a tarot reader about you and they would say you're very compatible. Wow, that's different than the other two piles. What would it how would a tarot reader describe um pile number three? One, three, four. Spooky. I would say a tarot reader would describe your large purpose, um, how impactful you are in some sort of divine plan, or um, how, how spiritual you are, or how connected you are. Because I feel like even people who like work in nature, for example, I feel like they can be some of the most spiritually powerful people I've ever met. Um, so it doesn't have to be just people who know about spirituality or actively think about it in that way. But I feel like a tarot reader would describe you as someone who's like very connected to the path. You know, like there's lots of things people call that like feeling of of knowing a higher purpose or n knowing a higher power in some way. Like you're very connected to that in whatever kind of phrasing you put it in. Or however it kind of plays out in your life. I could see you as someone who's a really good gardener. And so this has made you kind of spiritually ascend. Um, I've seen this in people for sure. Like just you, they have a sense of serenity. They've reached, you know, they look like a yogic kind of um you know, master or something like that, the way they kind of live through the world. And they've gained that through Sometimes it's like physical exercise. Often I see it with people in nature, like people who live by the ocean um, and have spent like lots, lots and lots and lots of their time in it. Um, or people who are working for like a national park and so they're always in nature and having lots of times to like commune with nature and also like think and yeah, lots of alone time to think. So I feel like they would describe how you've had lots of alone time to think, and this has brought you to a higher awareness. Also, you have this kind of like treat sense, do you? I feel like a tarot reader would describe as like, you are very embedded and grounded and earthy, just with your whole kind of, your whole energy is giving me very much earthy. Um, but back to the dice here, we've got one, which is Aries, um, in the first house. So it's like self, again, you have, you're very grounded, you know yourself through kind of like some sort of serenity work. And three is Gemini. I'm getting like creativity. One with the wind again, like kind of, uh, man, I, you're, you're very, art, it's not artistic, maybe, like a little bit, but it's more like yeah, serene, serene. Okay, and four, you, yeah, you, maybe you're like kind of um, a hippie type or you have like a hippie energy to you. And four is cancer or the home. So I feel like also a tarot reader would describe how your home is like your oasis or why you decided to move to a specific place. A tarot reader might mention that depending on your life story and everything. I think you'll know if that's for you. Um, but yeah, I think those are things that a tarot reader might describe you. How would a tarot reader describe pile number three? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, again, it's like they might describe so this is the example for a specific person. They might say that you guys had a past life together or, um, yeah. Or that this is like a person that you're meant to pursue romantically. I 
think a tarot reader might describe how how the person asking has a lot of things that you've asked for in a person and a lot of what you are needing right now. They have some good answers for you. So it's kind of like a reading for you, Pile 3, because it's saying like somebody is coming in very soon who has some traits that you have really been looking for in either a friend or a romantic partner and you knew them in a past life. So just a side message. New business partner, new um, close friend. And again, it's like giving like soulmate or yeah, past life connection. And that you guys are very compatible and why? Because I feel like the reason it's coming up is like a tarot reader would describe all the ways in which you and this person asking are compatible. Um, Okay. I'll just keep going with this for a little bit. Um, I think they would describe how you guys are very similar, how you think about yourselves in a similar way, how you have similar goals um, about how you want to change the world. Um, I think also they would describe how your creative process mirrors theirs or adds to theirs in a really nice way. Um, and then they would also say that you have a lot of similar hobbies and you have a very good emotional understanding that would be um, the perfect fit. So let's try to move away from that and go back to how would a tarot reader describe you? Yeah, they would describe you as someone healing, someone battle-worn, um, someone who is full of passion and energy for life and wants to keep moving forward even after all these struggles. It's like you never slow down or get tired. That's another thing about you. Everyone gets tired, but um, if this is how they're describing you, I just feel like you get tired a lot less than other people and you have a drive. Um, so maybe this is like less of a personality trait, but just a fact, you are always moving forward. Keep moving forward. Love the Robin meets the Meet the Robinsons is a great movie, kids movie. But you bring new ideas and new concepts to people. You're always on the front, cutting edge of new ways of thinking and how to solve a problem. Um, you're always the first person to solve a problem. You go through a lot of competition. You've been through a lot of competition. Um, there have been moments in your life where it was nonstop chaos and nonstop arguments or um, obstacles. And you made it through that period of time. Because I'm getting like here with the night's journey kind of thing. Is that I feel like a tarot, a tarot reader would describe the trials and tribulations of pile number three. And how they acted with honor and persevered through all of these challenges. And again, why that would help this person asking about you. Okay, take what resonates. You've been through a lot of harassment. Um, yeah, I think a tarot reader would describe how you've been through a lot of harassment. And I also feel like maybe even like um, spiritual attacks, you know? And I feel like that if, if people are around you, hating on you unknowingly or doing things behind your back, this is spiritual attack as well. Um, or overly involving themselves in your affairs and stopping you from doing things and stopping from you from expressing yourself. Those are all spiritual attacks, which take a toll on somebody's heart and emotional state um, and how that kind of impacts the way you live now. I feel like, I feel like they would describe how you're healing, how you're going through a new journey, which is more healing kind of this um, spiritual attack. But first you had to physically fight your way out of some sort of combative time. Um, I feel like you had a physically combative time for a long time where you were like maybe in survival mode or maybe had to work like a lot of jobs or um, just went through something physically in your present environment that was very stressful, like actually happening to you right then. And then you also, at that same time, were dealing with spiritual attack and emotional abuse, maybe, or um, 
definitely gossip or again harassment and that sort of thing and so now that you've gotten out of the physical strife portion you are dealing with the kind of ramifications of this spiritual attack like you know um clearing your energy i feel like clearing your energy is something that works both spiritually and it's something that we can do to kind of heal from mean things that were said too it's it's physical and it's um spiritual but yeah i just feel like right now you're learning that and you're learning how to kind of recover from this harassment because yes you didn't have to do anything to fight against it physically but you still were you were on a, a second battlefield over here so now you're just dealing with the consequences of that battlefield while you come into a more physically stable place Yeah, you've accomplished some sort of wish fulfillment or dream that you had been fighting for for years and so you've just accomplished something huge and i feel like a tarot reader would describe that um because that's very important to where they're finding you right now which is having just completed this kind of huge physical obstacle stepping into better um financial situations stepping into a job you actually like stepping into a um yeah, just a physical environment that is more safe and not like this anymore. Okay. Yeah, I think a tarot reader will also describe how you still have these people watching on the sidelines. You still have people on your periphery that maybe hate you or maybe were competing with you for a long time or caused you a lot of pain and suffering and were active antagonists in your story they still linger they still watch pal three um and there's nothing wrong with that you know in terms of what you're doing pal three you're not doing anything to cause this but it's just one of those things like if you move out of your hometown people might still you know look into you um it's just you know something that happens and so they would describe that how there are still people who harbor resentment against pile three. And, and I think pile three is dealing with that. So I feel like that's what a, a tarot reader would describe is like how you are currently dealing with the kind of ramifications that every of everything that happened in this big period of life where you accomplished some goal. Now that you've accomplished the goal, it's like you're still thinking over what everything that went down. It was kind of a, it was a really crazy time in your life. And it might have been like a couple years I'm getting like, um, so maybe your early 20s or something like that, you know? <laughs> um, or maybe it could, be, it could have been your teenage years or something like that, like, or a divorce. Or I'm seeing a lot of different scenarios. It'll be different for all of you, but I think you'll know what this is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to know what this is. Yeah. I think that a tarot reader would, would tell this person how you have been through it. <laughs> Paul three, you have dealt with some pretty evil, malicious stuff. Like, um, I'm very sorry, Paul three, that you've had to deal with that. Truly. I think you're very brave. I think you're very courageous and you won and you're successful. Good job. Um, but yeah, it's malicious stuff here. Really not cool. Words that might be difficult for you to forget, you know, and that you are currently trying to move past some of that stuff that happened. Again, I just feel like you're in a phase where you're like, wow, that really happened like that. Like, I can't believe they did that. or I can't believe that happened. Like, and just kind of thinking about it, I think you're handling it really well. And you're in a safe place now to kind of mull these things over. But um, yeah, I think a tarot reader would describe that that's kind of where you're at right now. You're kind of like, wow, can't believe they took it that far. I can't believe they said that. Like, that's pretty bad. <laughs> okay. It's like you're finding yourself right now. I think you're on a journey of finding yourself. And that's what a tarot reader would describe you. Like, you're finding your personality again after having to be in this warrior mode for so long. Or however long it was. It felt like a long time. Um, okay. You're excited for this new chapter. You're passionately moving forward, but I think the tarot reader would want to tell them that pile three seems passionate. They they seem excited. They've just accomplished a great goal. They're riding a high, um, but they still have a lot of things that they're thinking about. 
they still have a lot of, you know, pain that they're sorting through right now. So grief is kind of funny in that you never know when it's going to pop up. So don't get alarmed if suddenly Pal 3 is not all Knight of Wands, jokey, fun times, and suddenly they get a little dark or they have a melancholy moment. Um, that's just a part of the grieving process. And they're, they're in a strange time in their life. What, there was some TikTok trend that was like that. It was like, you've met me at such a strange moment in my life. But that's, that's what it is, you know? Like, that's what it is. You're, you're at a strange moment in your life, Pal 3. And that, a tarot reader would describe that. It's a good thing. You're doing great. Um, but I think spirit world tries to look out for us. And I feel like they, that's why they would want to be emphasizing these things so people can be lenient with you. So people can understand where you're coming from. Um, so they can believe your experience too sometimes, you know. I hope that everyone is validating you. If no one else is, Pile 3, I know that this was hard and I know they weren't right for what they did. Um, so... If anyone would ever make you doubt that, don't let them. But I think that's another reason why this sort of thing would be brought up so that a tarot reader could say, you know, do not doubt them. They don't need that right now. Mm. That you're headed towards happiness. You're headed towards peace and stability and really coming to terms with your life and your situation. Um, coming to a really healthy place you're becoming a really 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 healthy person and so I feel like that's why they want to mention that right now you're at a funky time so you maybe you might say something you don't mean or um maybe again you get sad and you're not really a sad type individual so they don't want you they don't want people to think that just because you're sad right now that this is something that you're always like or this is a part of your personality. It's not necessarily really a part of your personality. You're actually a very fun, sweet person. But yeah, fun, active, sweet, funny person. But right now, you're coming out of warrior mode. You have your front-facing knight of wands. But underneath of that, you're sorting through a lot. Um, and so you're trying to post that over. You see how it's like kind of covering everything with the Ten of Cups, the Nine of Cups, the Knight of Wands. You know, you want to have fun. You want to enjoy this victory. You want to enjoy your loved ones and feel emotionally stable and secure. But it was pretty bad. You know, it was pretty bad. And that's it it needs to be said it needs to be said i think that's what you're reckoning with pile three is that yeah dang you know that was pretty bad we're doing good this is amazing i'm so excited but damn you know yeah judgment is being reached on the situation you're coming to good conclusions you're moving forward in a very healthy you know slow and steady easy kind of mentally way for you. Um, you have good habits that you're working with. Basically, they I think the tarot reader would want to emphasize to this person that you're doing everything right and you're coming to good conclusions and you're making the progress. So don't take this low moment as a low moment because it's really not. This is actually very successful um, culmination of a lot of different things happening in Pal 3's life. So good to know. Ace of Swords. Yeah, basically, you're not your true self right at this very moment. You're going through a transition. You're feeling a little um, like you're figuring things out. You're, you're researching your own mind. You're kind of you're sorting through things. You're finding good physical practices that um, help you process this, these kind of lingering feelings from everything that happened. Um, and pretty soon, the Ace of Swords will be upright. The Ten of Cups will be coming into fruition. You're going to feel like your real self again. You're going to be very emotionally stable and happy. Um, it's just you're on that journey. You're on. They they met you at a very strange time in your life, Pile 3. So um, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's pull some music videos to end off. And usually this is where I get like the looks kind of stuff that they would mention. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... We get the Ten of Swords and the Empress. So it's like you're healing these terrible betrayal wounds. It's taking you a second, but 
you're doing it way better than most could. Um, you're healing a lot of things that are pretty dark. Um, yeah, it's just good to know. But this is not, I feel like the reason a tarot reader would describe this to them, because this is not something you're going to be talking about right at the gate with a relationship with someone or a friendship with someone. It's essential to know why you're being the way you are and not in a negative way, but just like, it's important to understanding your thought processes right now um, is that you've just stopped being actively betrayed and gotten yourself out of a bad physical situation. Um, yeah, so they might learn this story in full later down the road, but take it slow with Pal 3 because they want to sort through it before they're just going to unload it on your plate, you know? They don't want to say anything about this they don't mean. And that is, it doesn't mean they don't trust you if they're not sharing every part of the story. Okay, so that's good. Let's pull some music videos. Tarot reader, describe. Pile number three. You're definitely really deep as well. They would try to. Um, explain that like there's lots of layers to you you're like an onion pile number three again it's like there's reasons for the way you act or what you like to do with your life right now like I don't know there's something about that where there's there's good reason for you to be acting the way you're acting right now um, or for you to be in the position you're in right now Yeah, they, they're, they're supporting your decisions and trying to, maybe this person who's asking about you grew up in a very different way than you and they don't, they're not understanding how you got from A to B, like, or why you're making the decisions you're making right now. Um, and so the tarot reader would want to emphasize to them that they're, they are making the right decisions for them and they're doing very well on their journey. They're making the right decisions. You're just not seeing everything that's going into it. You're not, you're not understanding the logic, but it is there. So, okay. Yeah, you're on your get back era. You're, you're figuring things out. You're rising up again out of the ashes. That's what I'm getting. It's like you're a phoenix rising right now. And so I'm, I'm going to leave these down below. Thank you very much, Pile 3. And I will see you next time. Peach Selenite release. Pile number four. Hmm. I think some of the time a um a reader would be telling telling people to leave you alone Paul for to let you be not to not try to control you um okay knight of swords king of pentacles i think pal four you are a very logical character um, I'm getting like mafia guy from you, Pile 4. Like, you don't play around and you have people to do things for you. Or you got friends in high places or you got friends in low places. You have connections. You are not a person to 
who is in need of protecting or saving. Don't save her. She doesn't want to be saved kind of energy here. Um, like, yeah, you've, you've got a, something about you've got connections or you've got a backup. You've got a bodyguard. You've got a plan B. You have an ex escape hatch. Like, stop. So some people would just be getting that as a part of your personality. And then other people would be getting that as in enough. I am getting that. You might have some people that are really um, testing their limits here. Trying to control you in some way. And that they need to release you. They need to release you. Okay. Justice. <laughs> And again, I'm getting like so much like mafia kind of energy with this. It's just, you have the law on your side. That's another thing. There's something about, you know the law, you work within the law, you, um, hmm. you have friends in high places. I'm definitely getting that. So if that's the spirit world or if that's literally you have a, you know, an uncle who's a lawyer or something like that, like that's kind of what I'm getting. Or maybe you have connections around town. I think a tarot reader will also describe you as kind of a local celebrity in a way. Like people know about your comings and goings. People, people watch you. You're like a public figure. And, you know... Teresa at the swap meet was a public figure. Like, everyone knows about her life. That's just a random example. I just mean, like, you don't have to be having a platform or being a politician or a teacher or something to be a public figure. Like, a lot of people are public figures in their community or at their job just because everybody seems to know, you know, all the latest gossip. You know, you're like a, you're, you're part of the news. Five of Swords. You control things, you know? I feel like that's a big part of your personality that a tarot reader would describe. Um, and it's more than personality. It's actually your, the way you live in, in the world. You can play nice or you can play dirty. Like you, you have it covered in both worlds. See, like you can be yelling and down in the dirt with, with everybody and you can get in a fight with one of the little one of the little guys, or you can go up, you can, you can rise up the ranks and take it over their head or something. So this could be about a job, maybe. Um, not to mess with you because you could, you know, physically fight them or, you know, like get in a verbal alter altercation with them where you would win. Um, but then also you wouldn't be afraid to tell the boss or you wouldn't be afraid to take it to the higher ups or something like that. And then for other people, I feel like that's good to know as well. Like you are the kind of person who keeps everything in line. You're, you're giving me very like strict, um, again, serious morals, which gives me old Italian guy, um, like in a way, <laughs> okay. Like here's what you're gonna do, here's what you're not gonna do. And you will make it happen, like, okay? Let's see. <laughs> I'm also getting you're not above an outburst. Like, you're not above yelling if someone gets in your face or something like that. You're not above it. So it's like, again, there might be this sense that you're very upstanding or you're very high up in uh, organization or status. So people might think that you won't you'll just avoid confrontation or you'll kind of let them get away with something because you don't want to make a scene, but you're not afraid of making a scene. Okay. The tarot reader describe how for it's Cancer, Taurus, and Capricorn. You do have like a sneakiness to you.
but like in a very smart way. Again, it's like you don't say the quiet part out loud, out loud. And so this is gangster movie again to me. It's like, I can make him an offer he can't refuse. That's not saying exactly what he's doing, right? But you get the point and it's still very menacing, even though he's not being 100% direct with that statement, right? And I feel like you have that about you. Um, you have this sense of, yeah, not saying the quiet part out loud, but don't cross the line. Don't cross the boundary. You keep everybody in their place. <laughs> or you can put people in your pla in their place as well. Let me think about this for a second. Reputation, property, and home. You know, I mean, there's something about that where it's like a stability. And again, an enmeshment in your location you know, and a sturdiness, uh, a staying power. You'll not be uprooted easily, that's for sure. So maybe this, you know, there could be people who have problems with you or something like that. And so a tarot reader would need to describe how you will not be losing this fight and you will not be You'll be down in there doing the work and you'll be behind the scenes plotting. So yeah, mafia. It's like you have your guys, you have your spies, you also have connects in the government and you know, make this a metaphor. It's like you have these kind of all these different avenues, all these different backup plans, which make you very secure in your life. I feel like It's good to get to know your community so you can have a backup. It's also good because they know you. And so when somebody goes around saying things that aren't true about you, they already know you. So they're not going to take this person's word for it. Um, yeah, and that's something about you is that people know you around town. You have a reputation. You have a strong standing in your community. And that's good to know. Okay. <laughs> You're very stern, too. I think that they would describe you're very stern. You're very serious. And you mean it, you know? And you... You demand respect. And I feel like I've said that in one of the other piles, but I can't remember. But this is, like, very much like a father figure kind of type of respect here. It's like... Don't even speak up against me. That is stupid. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. You should strike fear in, in anybody kind of coming against you. I feel like a tarot reader would describe that no matter Pals 4's appearance, you should be afraid. They should strike fear in you. Or they will strike fear in you. That's another thing. Um, if you push them too far, you will be afraid. Um, don't take their appearance. Yeah, don't, don't let their appearance fool you. So I think there's something about your appearance that very much um, counteracts your voice and your, and what your role is in society and how you work. So there's something about your whole appearance and the way you present and how you talk and the kind of things you say that gives off this um, maybe more lighthearted character or this person with um, who's more of a charmer, more of a joker and less of a king. But don't let it fool you. Don't let the appearance, don't let the outfit fool you. Don't let my funny, you know, sayings fool you like I am someone you should be afraid of. Damn. <laughs> so strong. Seven of Swords, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll fight. We'll fight. If you want to fight, we can fight. Why? What's going on? Why is that coming up? I think it's because people are considering it. So this is possible. You never even, like, these situations don't even come up for you because I pulled the Seven of Cups over here. Um, but it's possible that you don't even know about half these situations that are happening where people are considering trying you. And they are getting heavy signals, whether or not they seek out a tarot reader. They're getting heavy, heavy signals from the spirit world, from God. Don't try it. And I feel like that's why it's coming up so heavily in your energy. 
right now, Pal 4, and ha this is how a tarot reader would have to describe you, because so many messages are being sent down from, from the heavens right now to a lot of different people that are basically saying, Pal 4 should scare you, watch out, don't try them. If you're thinking about trying them, this is one of your many options is to try Pal 4, you better pick any other option. And so they're just, I feel like there's a lot of um, feelings being sent out to people, um, messages being sent out to people in whatever way they pick them up, uh, that you are not to be played with and make sure you don't choose that option of going against pile four. Hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. But good to know, right? Heaven's on your side, trying to prevent these obstacles from even appearing. Of course, you know you would take care of them lickety-split, but maybe we can save some heads and um, avoid any conflict. Three of Wands, yes. Things will always work out in Pile Four's favor. 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 Um, hmm. What was that? Yeah, don't don't um kill a pile four's high. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, because I was like, what it, flavor? Interesting. Why would I say that? You know, and I pulled the card over here and it said excitement. So I'm like, I feel like right now you are writing high. You're enjoying yourself. You will pull out the justice card if you need. Um, but you're writing high, and so it's not a good idea to kill pile four's high. Um Everything will work out in Power Four's favor anyway, so it's just it's, it's a losing game. Don't kill their high. Don't bother with Power Four. Like, choose another option. And then people who are just like you know getting signs about you or casually looking into you and are not trying to go against you or anything. It's just that they this is still being described because it's so heavy in your energy right now. Is that you are very form formidable. Justice always works out in your favor. You always win behind and in front of the scenes. Um, you will go to bat if need be. Um, you will definitely say something harsh if somebody would really come at you like that. They usually don't because, and that's maybe why it needs to be brought up by a tarot reader or um, sent as a message because many people have not seen you go in on someone because Maybe no one has tried you like that in a long time, Pile 4, but you still have that capacity. And you will do it if if you need to. It's just that you've set up all these other ways to kind of deal with problems and usually don't have to sink that low. But if someone wants to take it there, we can take it there. Nine of Wands. It's just, it's, it's just kind of exactly what I was saying. Like Five of Swords and Nine of Wands. You're trying to be good right now. <laughs> I feel like a tarot reader would describe like, don't, this is not, this is also not, like in general, don't mess with Pile 4, but this is also like really not a good time for you to mess with Pile 4 because they're trying to be good right now. Like they're getting, they they are tempted to fall into these old, um, old ways of being a lot harsher or really maybe breaking someone's self-esteem down over here for the kind of, childish ways they behave or something like that and so if you gave pal for the opportunity to come at you with no downside like if you really came at them like like maybe your one of your options is to is to kind of confront them in public or try to humiliate them in some way oh man you know it's almost like this would be Pile four hitting you out of the ballpark. They would get a home run. You would be dead immediately because it's just like, yeah, they have a lot of pent up energy that they're trying to let go of and they're trying to keep the peace and they're trying to be good. But if you give them that, you know, if you're going to throw it right down the middle like that, <laughs> you're going to throw them an easy one. They're going to take it and they're kind of going to be even more extreme than they might have normally because they're trying to put a uh, you know, a capper on their anger, and you've kind of let it out before they really solved that problem. So interesting. <laughs> That's funny. You're choosing peace. Yeah, a big thing that they would describe Pal for is that you're right now. You're choosing peace, and you you don't want to have a conflict. You don't want to get into it with these people. So 
There are plenty of other options that these people can choose to try to solve their problems or enjoy themselves or whatever, you know, reason they might think to come against you. Um, but they really should choose a different one. Also, it's better to keep you as a neutral ally because, again, you have a lot of connections and you have a lot of um, things at your disposal. You have a lot to bring to the community, so it's just not it's not good to make an enemy of you as well. Um, I think they would describe that. It's like you're an amazing ally, terrible enemy, um, and a good friend. <laughs> so, okay, cute. The world. Let's all be friends. Let's make peace. I feel like um, it's getting, and again, I think the reason it's so heavy in your energy and we're not really talking about much else, it, and that's just right now, you know, watch another reading a different time, but I think right now it's just like, this is really in your energy because everyone is getting the signals from heaven, including any tarot reader that would look into you that you want peace, you would prefer it. It's a good idea to give you that. And why don't we just forget our old problems and move on? Um, you know, we don't need to get into it. We can move forward and start a new cycle. We don't need to go backwards like this. And if you do, you will lose. Power 4 will win. And you'll lose an ally. A valuable one. So that's what I've got for you, Power 4. <laughs> We're going to pull some music videos to end off. perfect and don't stop the music let's not don't kill pile force high it's, it's very serious that you do not kill pile force high <laughs> that'd be a better um if you don't smoke um like pile four is really enjoying themselves right now pile four is mentally prancing through a meadow like don't come in with a bb gun because you're not gonna like the results <laughs> you know don't play with it don't play with ball four watch out she'll win they'll win he'd rather just dance ball four would rather just just have a good time and dance around so don't don't make it serious because you won't like it all so i'm gonna leave these down below thank you very much pal for um in terms of your appearance i think you can pick up stuff from this i definitely think you have a lot of sex appeal right now you're glowing um you're you're kind of looking at a peak with your appearance right now people are saying that like there's something about yeah a glow up of some kind so definitely watch these and i will see you next time